Hello, my Wilberforce family and friends. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 2 of Wilberforce Alums Podcast. Remember now, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe so we can continue to bring the exciting news of all those exciting things happening on the campus of Wilberforce University, as well as those alums who are doing wonderful things in their communities. Now, before we get started with this episode, Episode 2's interview, uh, which is going to be a signing interview to hear from uh, the 23rd president of Wilberforce University, Dr. Van R. Newkirk Sr., who will be chatting with us about all the exciting things happening on campus. Before we get to his interview, let me also uh, uh, remind you of the 350 New Dorm campaign that the alumni are sponsoring to build a new dorm on the campus of Wilberforce University starting in the spring of 2024. As you know, en enrollment is increasing. We increased in the fall of 2023 about 29%, and we're looking to increase throughout next year of 2024. In order to, to, to manage this increase in enrollment, of course, we need to have dorms for the students to sleep in. The alumni have taken on the responsibility of raising funds for the dorm to be built in the spring of 2024. We're asking that all alums and friends and, even, and, and others to give at least $350 to the new dorm campaign to build this new dorm in the spring of 2024. $350 is not much. However, if you can't give uh, $350 at this point in time, looking at the holidays coming up, Christmas, etc., give something. Give something to the university who has given so much to us as alumni as we, as we continue to keep hope alive on the campus of Wilberforce University. Now, you'll see a, 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 a uh, page graphic of the 350 New Dorm campaign. You can scan the QR code to t that will take you to the 350 New Dorm campaign giving site, or you can go to wilberforce.edu and click on the 350 New Dorm campaign page, and that will take you to the donation page for this campaign. Remember, it's the 350 New Dorm campaign to build the new dorm on the campus of Wilberforce in the spring of 2024. Now, the Alumni Association is responsible for funding this new, this new dorm, so we need all alums, as many as possible, to give something to this campaign. We're hoping to get at least three, um, I'm sorry, at least 2,000 alums to give $350 to this campaign that will fund this new dorm on the campus of Wilberforce University. The funds restricted specifically for the building of this new dorm in the spring of 2024. So give, give as much as you can or whatever you can to help us make this goal a reality. Now, we're about to get started. We're gonna take a little break. You'll see the graphic relative to the 350 New Dorm campaign. And then we'll come back with our guests for season two, see, I'm sorry, season four, Episode 2 of Wilberforce Alums Podcast. Stay tuned. Now I'll have okay. Welcome, my alumni, Wilberforce and friends and family. Welcome to season four, episode two of Wilberforce Alums Podcast. Now, as you know, what I need you to do is to give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe so we can continue to keep you abreast of what's going on on the campus at Wilberforce University and you know what 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 YouTube uh, recordings we put down every month. Well, today I'm going to be interviewing the 23rd president of Wilberforce University, Dr. Van R. Newkirk 
Jr. Who is on campus Jr. now. Stop. St- <laughs> Did I say Junior Senior? <laughs> yeah, Senior. Senior. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Newkirk Senior, uh, who is on campus now, uh, 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 taking the, 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 the reins, you know, and, and leading the university forward. And at this point, I'm going to kind of just ask uh, Dr. Newkirk to come in and uh, give us a couple of words of uh, uh, where he comes from, what he's got going on, and so on and so forth. So, Dr. Newkirk, go right ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Just so glad to be with you today. Uh, I'm glad to be here at the university. I've been here as president now, what, four months, and we've made a lot of progress and uh, a lot of things are happening. So I w- want to enlighten you about those things. But uh, prior to coming here, as you might know, I'm a native North Carolinian and previously served as president of Fisk University, the 17th president of Fisk University. And uh, I've got a wealth of experience. I've worked uh as a provost, I've been three times a provost, like they say, three times a lady. Uh, and I've been a graduate dean and served in a number of roles throughout uh, colleges of all types across the South. And one of the specialties that I have is dealing with accreditation and fundraising. So that that's in a nutshell. I'm a uh, recent married. I've been married now really about two months or three months. Congratulations. And, <laughs> yes. And I've got three adult kids. And my young, my oldest son is a journalist, and that's why I was saying we always, you know, tease each other about the name, same name, but he's junior and I'm senior. Amen. So that's the All whole right. story. All right, and I, I I recognize those 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 endings of of names, man, because I'm the third, and there's five of us: James B. Stafford, <laughs> the, <laughs> James B. Staffords, and I'm the third, and there's two more. So <laughs> you know, now that you've been on campus, you know, for a couple of months, more than a couple, four, three or four months now, and how have you found uh, you're settling in here on uh, Wilberforce's campus? Well, I think we're settling in good. Uh, we are doing a lot of things to try to get our institution, uh, the ship, to to right sizes and making sure our ship is, you know, uh, sailing the waters as smoothly as possible. Uh, and that means that we've made some hard changes, but those changes looks like in some ways are benefiting us as an institution. Uh, we, we looked at... Uh, our majors and what we're offering and those majors that we can do a lot of have strengths in, we're looking at strengthening those and some of the majors where we're not quite as strong. We're looking at how we can actually, uh, what we can do with those majors so we can continue to offer those. And all of that's helping us as a university to grow stronger. And we're looking at how we have more resources. And so we restructure our budgeting process and that's helping the university to have more resources and to move forward in an enrollment uh, driven in a tight, what I want to say, economy for HBCUs. Well, talk a bit a little about enrollment because I know we've uh, enrollment has increased this this fall. Uh, talk about that and what that leads us into as to complement or support that enrollment growth. Well, you know, right now this year our enrollment is up twenty eight percent for the fall semester, and we've had one of the largest freshman class that we've had here in almost ten years, uh, and because of that. As an institution, we've run out of residential spaces for people to live in, but we didn't turn any students away. We were able to, uh, fortunately, to lease some spaces across the street. We actually leased 200 spaces across the street at Central State University. Uh, and so when people say that, you know, uh, Central is popping up, propping up uh, Wilberforce, that's not true. It's the other way around because we are sending our students to live in those dorms and uh, that's helping them to do better. But What's good about this is that uh, having this growth means that we've got more revenue, but it's also a problem for us and we've got to solve it. It's a good problem. That problem is, is that we've got to find housing for those students on our campus. And that means we've got to have new dorms, new residential space, because the concern is that as Central State grows their enrollment, what happens if they have a huge class coming in to squeeze out those spaces? So we started the process, and this year we're building the first of what will be six new residential apartments, uh, which will be in the location of the old Tempkin Court. We broke ground on the first building a few weeks back, uh, and we are looking to have that building completed by March of next year. And we've also got this campaign that the alums have uh, chipped in, and we are now raising money to build the second building. 
Uh, each building will hold 36 students. Uh, and each building has a cost tag of about $700,000. So it's one of those things that we're going to do. We want to make sure we build enough spaces to have 200 and some odd additional spaces on campus. We need to have 700 spaces on our campus in order to make sure we can house a population of 1,000 or more. And, and let me let me just kind of piggyback on that that uh, uh, dorm that uh, the alums are uh, are picking up on trying to to fund for the to, to be built in the spring of next year and and we call it the three hundred and fifty new dorm campaign and all alums are in the sound of my voice you know I'd like for you to kind of you belly up to the bar if you will and 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 make your donation to this to this growth this growth through building helping the alums to build this new dorm by making a donation of at least. Three hundred and fifty dollars, and if you do make that kind of a do donation to this dorm campaign, your name will be engraved on a plaque that will reside on the wall of that new dorm. Now, I know that sometimes you know it, it's tough during this time of the year, you know, with Thanksgiving, the holidays, Christmas. So you know, it, it doesn't matter if you can't make the three fifty. Make something, something you can give back to Wilberforce University, who has given so much to all of us. Who have, who have crossed these, come through these doors and the stage at Wilberforce University at graduation. So put that on uh, as, as one of the things that you need to do as we move forward towards this growth that we expect to take place on the campus of Wilberforce University. So I know there's some other things that have happened here, uh, Dr. Newkirk, relative to some recognition that we've gotten uh, from major magazines and, and other things. You want to speak to that a little bit? Yes, uh, we have actually gotten a lot of recognition from places like uh, nationally known scholars like Mary Beth Gassman, who was on our campus. Uh, Mary Beth came to explore our programs and was very excited to know that we had a number of engineering programs. And that led to more conversations about our university. And it led to an article which was in uh, Forbes magazine about the university and its offering in offerings and the things that we're doing as a university. But it also led to a number of partnerships that we are signing and partnerships that are going to help us when we talk about the quality of faculty and are going to help us when our students graduate and with uh, ties to engineering and ties to new programs. But we got new partnerships that came about with Ohio State, partnerships with the University of Cincinnati, partnerships with Kent State University, and partnerships with Case Western University and those partnerships have all come about as we begin to have more people looking at our programs and the quality of programs and the quality of our students who come out of the university. Now, in addition to that, we're actually looking at how we reincorporate internships and cooperative education into our curriculums. And that's led to more opportunities for our students. As a matter of fact, uh, we just had a group of students who left Washington, D.C., who offered jobs to work with agencies look such as the FBI and other agencies. And that's really important for us because what we're noticing now is that uh, we're not just getting one or two companies coming to our campus. We're getting handfuls of companies that are coming to our, our campus. And they're not just going across the street. They're coming straight to Wilberforce University because they realize we are a small institution, but we're one that's nimble and agile and we can make those turns uh, and changes in curriculum. And that's helping us to garner new recognition as a university. So I think that's important. And also with our new faculty, uh, we've brought in some very talented faculty. And because of those faculty and what they're doing, we have people who are now beginning to look at us in the fundraising realm, what we're talking about in grants. Uh, we just brought in a new $806,000 grant to help our master's degree program uh, from the Department of Ed. Uh, we have a $52,000 grant that came in a couple of days after that to help with mental health. Uh, we've got a $2 million grant that came in earlier this year to help with the infrastructure on the campus. And uh, all of those things are happening because of the quality of the faculty and the students that we bring to this university and turn out. Well, that's some good information to, to, to share with the alums, uh, Dr. Newkirk. They certainly need to hear that those positive things happening at the university relative to grants and academia. Uh, you know, I know there's so much going on. It's probably uh, a lot to talk about. I know that uh, there's some changes taking place in the, uh, 
in the uh, uh, the the student center area, for example. Uh, talk talk a little bit about some of those changes being those enhancements being made there. Well, what we've done in the student center, we've actually put in our first spirit store at the college. And that has been really exciting. Our students have been excited. Uh, it was open. We had a soft opening for homecoming. And what was so good about it is that uh, we only had a limited supply of materials, but we actually sold out. And uh, that is something that right now that we can say that's really going to benefit the university, not just in the realm of spirit, but it's going to also help us because Right now, we're, we're selling a significant amount of material each week, and that's going right back into the bottom line to help us at the university. And we plan to have a real presence with this bookstore. In addition to that bookstore, we've changed our food vendor. So we have food that our students are always talking about. This is the best food on earth. And I'm going to tell you why this is good about changing the food vendor. Uh, our retention rate, we have historically, our retention rate was relatively low over the last four or five years. But this past two cohorts that we brought in of students, we're retaining uh, for the class that just came in in the fall, above 80 percent of those students have registered already. For the fall of last year, above 70 percent of those students have registered to come back. So we're retaining more of our students. and That means that our enrollment is going to continue to grow. And in addition to that, uh, those enhancements and, and, and retention growth, uh, we've got a new Starbucks that's coming to our uh, student center. Uh, it's taken a little bit longer because we've had to do some wiring and get some codes. But Starbucks is coming to our student center, and our students are looking forward to that. And then we've actually crafted a, a center where our students can look at all of the NFL games all around the country. That's in our center. And then an eSports arena is being constructed as we speak, in which our students can actually participate in eSports on the collegiate level or as an entertainment. And all of those things are helping us with retention, because if you go to the union now, if you've not been there lately, you can find that there's a, a real hub of activity. And our students are not only right here on campus, but we have a lot of kids who are coming from across the street to utilize the places and the things that we have here on our campus, which, you know, I think is giving us a more vibrant campus and a more vibrant campus culture for our students and for things to do. And I think that's important. Yeah, well, that's a switch, you know, where where they're coming from across the street over to our campus to take advantage of some of the things that we got going on. That, but that's a good positive switch, I might add. You know, we need to keep that going. Uh, those kinds of things, you know, uh, is important uh, for as far as retention goes. And I know, I think you mentioned what seventy five, eighty percent retention rate. That's that's yeah. high, that's up there amongst many of the the larger institutions. You know, as far as a retention rate, that's. That's that's rather, that's that's really good. So congratulations to that to to that regard. You know, all those things help us uh, to to re to keep students coming back to Wilberforce, and also makes it even more possible for us to uh, talk to other students about matriculating at Wilberforce as freshmen as well. So that's that's good news. And I'm glad to to hear that, and I'm sure the alums will be glad to hear that kind of information as well. What else is uh, is exciting going on on the campus? I know well, that. Uh, uh, go ahead. Well, y'all tell the alums this. You know, every month we spend eleven thousand dollars a month to cut the grass on this campus, which is a uh, a large amount for a small school. So we decided to get a little bit innovative. Uh, we just closed the deal on a robotic lawnmower. Huh. Uh, we'll be the only university in the area who's using robots to cut the grass. Uh, that lawnmower is an initial investment of in the 30000 I think it's $32,000. But uh, it's going to cost $12,000 to cut the grass a year instead of $11,000 per month. And uh, we don't need the manpower. We program it in and it cuts the grass around the campus. Uh, that's going to be one of the ways that we show people that we're using technology, technology to enhance what we're doing. We've mm -hmm. got Four technology-oriented majors, uh, computer engineering, computer science. Uh, we have electrical engineering, and then we have uh, uh, mechanical engineering. All of those are offered right here in this campus. And so what we want to do is that we want to invest heavily in items like that uh, robotic lawnmower so that people can see how we're using technology and innovation to move forward. And I think that's the thing 
that's going to help us to get where we want to go. Uh, by buying this lawnmower, we've had a lot of people who want to come out and see, you know, how we're utilizing it. They want to see uh, this whole thing at work. And I've found that to be one of the, uh, I want to say, won't say interesting, but fun. One of the fun parts about this job, because we are not following other colleges. We are a trendsetter. And uh, in being a trendsetter, we plan to continue to do other trends. So we want to automate uh, the sweeping of our parking lots. We're going to automate that and automate this whole thing if we can uh, get our students involved on some of our grants on how we remove snow. So all these are things that we are now having to plan. And, and I think that's going to give us not only uh, that extra umph, but that's going to let people notice that this university is not just a little liberal arts college, but it's a technology hub and a place that their students can go and get high paying jobs because of the technology and the way we're utilizing it. Hey, hey that, that's exciting there, right there. Uh, <laughs> robotic lawnmower. Well, I, and so nobody has to actually have a, like a joystick like you do with the, those video games. How you just program it and it does you, this you thing, You program right? it and it does, it does the rest. Once you program it, it does the rest and it moves on and cuts the rest of the grass and that's how it does. Wow. Well, that is something new and different. Well, look, I understand too that uh, you know we got a lot of exciting things going on with the the band and the choir now with Grammy possibilities. How's that working now? Oh man, that is working well. We've got uh, our band and and we've got uh, our choir who are participating in a Grammy project, and it looks like we are going to be well. We've been nominated. It looks like we have a good shot at this whole piece. Uh, and, and what we're doing now with that whole uh, piece as we begin to bring more students in and bring in the, uh, the quality of the product is that uh, we're trying to get those nominations and those votes. And that's the piece uh, that uh, we're not sure of yet, but we're confident that we're going to be high in the rankings. Uh, that, that's something that uh, we can be proud of because of the uh, quality of the leaders that we have for our band, for our choir. Uh, the thing I will say to alums that we want to make certain that we can do is that we want to make certain that we have the proper equipment for each of those groups. And uh, so we're now looking at making sure that we, you know, get our band outfitted correctly with uniforms. And we already laid out an order. We've ordered our first 51 uniforms they'll be coming back so you'll see next year a band that's not marching in shorts but a band that's marching in our school colors so we've ordered the first 51 we plan to order 100 by the time we get to school next year so we'll have a 100 outfitted band and uh our choir we plan to have our choir do some tours with me i'm going around to a lot of ame churches speaking and our choir is beginning to set up a tour and uh that's where we plan to hope to get the rest of the votes that we need people to know what we're doing here and not just being a vacuum because a lot of this has to do with the political side uh, and that's what we're trying to get that done now yeah that's that sounds good so will there be a uh uh i guess a uh i don't i guess people don't listen to cds much anymore but will there be something that that let's say alums or individuals can invest in relative to this 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 uh, Grammy award possibilities or or what? How's that work? Well, there'll be various performances that they do, and what we'll be doing, we'll be sending out links. Mm -hmm. I want you to get in and weigh in on that because that's you know how this is done to an extent. Uh, people are looking at the uh, ratings, and those ratings are important as we begin to kind of go forward. Uh, and they're also looking at how they influence others. And those others are many of the people who vote on this whole piece. Right. So, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You had to lobby that that committee that actually uh, votes on that, too, as well, to, mm -hmm. to make them aware that this is something they need to support. And and what we'll do is we get closer. <clears throat> we'll have information that we sent out through the alumni network so we can get everyone tuned in. If you will recall, when I was president of Fisk, we had the Fisk Jubilee Singer singing at a couple of NBA ball games and those things. And we had our alums tuning in, and that's one of the things that helped Fisk University's uh, choir to win the Grammy. And I think we're going to be doing some things similar. So stay tuned. We'll have some big events coming up, and we'll be asking folks to tune in because that's going to help us to get that notoriety that we need.
Perfect. Well, make sure you keep keep me posted on that so I can keep the alums, you know, informed about how that works and, and so that they can be certain to be tuning in on that. Yeah. Well, Wobble Fortunes, we are here talking with the 23rd president of Wilberforce University, the first private historically black university in the nation, Dr. Van R. Newkirk Sr., who's with us today. And, and he shared a whole lot of information with us at this point. A couple other things I know is happening on, on campus. I know now, too, that uh, uh, we're about to enter into a new um, uh, conference, athletic conference. Uh, I don't know if we're in it already or that begins in January 24, but how do you think that's going to sort out for us? I know it's all the HBCU type, uh, um, you know, uh, colleges and universities. And as a matter of fact, a couple of them close to me down here in Memphis, you know, so so we'll get a chance to see the Bulldogs play. So how's that going? Well, I think that's going well. We are going to be adding a couple of teams so we can actually qualify. We have to add a volleyball team. And we plan to add women's soccer. So we'll add those two sports uh, this year. They'll start in the fall of next year. Uh, and that's going to help us to meet the number of teams that we have to have. What we are glad about is that we'll be playing teams that are like-minded. We talk about in sports. Many of them are uh, HBCUs. They have some of the same challenges. All of them are HBCUs, but many of them have the same challenges that we have. And some of them have resource issues. But the thing that we can say about it is that we're playing names that people are familiar with. And that's going to help us as we begin to try to bring more fans to our games, yeah. as we begin to try yeah. to you know, make sure that we have a quality product on the floor and uh, that young people can compete against people who have the same like-mindedness. And, and that's all going to help us. Uh, what I found very interesting about this whole piece is that I got calls from folks down at Dillard I got calls from people down uh, in the New Orleans area, some of the schools, Stillman, uh, and they are all looking forward to playing our university. Uh, the folks at Fisk, where I came from, they they used they they want to play us, and they are playing us now. But they feel that it's a good move to have a school that's not quite that far, but they have a lot of rivalry with us, and so I think that's going to help us to drive up our attendance and not just have a gym with three or four people there. We have games. And I think getting in this conference, you'll begin to see us play more of these uh, attorneys that are going to be in larger cities because we plan to maximize our athletic uh, program to actually draw more attention to us as a university. Uh, we are have in the planning a classic that we plan to have in Dayton. We're also looking at perhaps having a classic down in Louisville and looking at where we go with large pockets of alums. Uh, we do have a number of alums in Charlotte. and We have contacts there. And so, you might even see us pop up in a, a Charlotte near you. So <laughs> that's what we're doing. So we think that's going to be uh, really a great move for us. Uh, I think you'll see uh, our athletic program becoming a stronger, more robust program. And it's going to cut our cost of travel. Right now we're traveling to games in California, but we have a difficult time because we're independent. But being in the conference means that our travel costs are going to come down but we will also have more home games and we'll have a quality product that we can put on the floor. That's great. That's great. That's great. Well, I look forward to that. And I know all these slums will as well to, to see the Bulldogs play close to home. That'll, that'll be, that'll be great. I know when you speak about uh, uh, travel, I know I just got a message that we got a, a new van on campus too, uh, just recently. So how, <laughs> how'd you pull that one off? <laughs> uh, well, we got the third Episcopal district to buy us a van. Uh, it is a nice, luxurious Nissan Armada van that holds 12 students, 12 passengers. Uh, that is going to really help us transform our internship program uh, and helping us to get our students to those places they need to go. Uh, and what was so important about it, no sooner did we got the, van, got the van on campus, we got an invitation to go to Columbus to a STEM event in which they're looking to hire X amount of students uh, on Tuesday. And without that van, this wouldn't be possible. So that's going to help us to actually broaden what we can do as a university. And that's going to help our students to get some of those jobs and some of those career pathways they couldn't get in the past. So mm. I can say that right now we have some transportation and I'm holding the keys tightly so we can make sure that we have transportation for the future. So it won't <laughs> be, <laughs> but that's what we have. 
that's perfect. That's perfect. Well, you know, this has been great uh, conversation. I know you could share a whole lot more with us, but we're about out of time, man. It's just like being on MSNBC. You know, we're about, about to run out of time here. And so, uh, you know, as we as we kind of wrap up, is there anything that you'd like to leave with the uh, uh, the alums or, or and and uh, your students or anyone who may be looking to attend Wilberforce? Anything you'd like to leave with us uh, as we close down? Well, I want to tell you about we're planning right now to put the AME, AME Cathedral on our campus uh, by the multiplex. It's going to be some years out, but we want to have a cathedral on our campus, the largest AME church west or east of the Mississippi. And uh, we are hoping and we are praying because we're going to be starting a capital campaign. This is one of the centerpieces of that capital campaign. And it's something that we believe that as a university, we have to have, because if we're going to be here, we've been here uh, since 1856, you know, we have to ask ourselves, they say Notre Dame is for the Catholics. They say Baylor is for the Baptists. Liberty is for the Baptists. And Wilberforce is for the AME. And we're going to be a national name not just a name from the past, but for the future. And that's something that we think is going to be big. So I want to leave that thought with you because that's something that we're planning on. But that's something that I think is going to help us go where we want to go to university. That's perfect. That's perfect. Well, that's the way you, That's the way we keep hope alive on the campus of Wilberforce University by all these interesting and new things and thinking outside the box because that's what it's going to take for us to to go and, and, and continue to to educate strong young minds as we've been doing for more than 160 years so it's good to hear all this information dr newkirk i thank you for uh taking some time out of you i know your busy busy schedule to share this this information with us uh so all the alums can hear exactly what's going on and hear it from you personally and i appreciate uh, uh, the time and effort uh, that you have and the love that you have put into coming to wilberforce university you know the 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 greatest university that i know (laughs) that i know (laughs) and that's suo mate (laughs) that's it that's it well thanks again and uh that uh, that ends our uh season season four episode two of wilberforce alums with dr van r newkirk senior thank you much thank you so much